I've accepted that if no one fucking acts in my um, situation, I am going to be murdered. There you go. I'm gonna fucking die. That is because I've got no help. I've got no love. There's no one in my life. My prosperity has all been systemically and politically, intentionally and maliciously redacted from me. And I've got nowhere to even fucking be. You wouldn't fucking believe it. Anyway, I've, uh, my cunt family, they've done the bare fucking minimum. They don't even speak to me. Jody Bongetti, Brad McLean, Kira McLean, Doug Napier McLean, do the bare fucking minimum to do anything for me. They fucking might as well hate me. The feeling's mutual. Anyway, I've got um, a message to give out today. And I've did an email to info at Prague Consulting. Paula there, she's got to respond to this. Info at psupportservices.com.au. There's Ibrahim, um, boss of PS Support Services. He needs to fucking get back to this. And info at kindandcaresupport.com.au. They need to fucking get back to this. It is their obligation to respond to this situation. And I've said to them, I am your client. I'm seeking a solution to my impasse. Let's find a solution. All I ever wanted is a home with food, medicine and protection from further victimisation, oppression and violence, including the violence of neglect. I asked a question and researched um, under AI chat and I've asked the chat under the NDIS code of conduct, if a participant is not respected or has their dignity removed or is the victim of a conspiracy or is unreasonably victimized in a political way or is rejected legal help or is rejected at the Australian Human Rights Commission when his human rights abuses are documented or has had their human rights abuses documented but no one will acknowledge it or they've suffered death threats to them or their pet and their well-being is dramatically and substantially affected because all of their prosperity has been deliberately redacted from them or even that the anti-corruption commission has rejected them and in doing so are fucking corrupt or that their public interest disclosures have been rejected despite them being a former public official in numerous ways and also is the former spouse of an ASIO employee and further to that, that no government agency, including the Prime Minister or the Tax Department or Centrelink or ASIC or a lawyer or a police officer will ever admit that that relationship actually even existed despite it being a well-known fact. Then, what are the reporting obligations of an NDIS provider who is tasked with the participant's care? So, Info at Prague Consulting, um, Paula, Info at PS Support Services, Ibrahim and Matthew and Kara and James, all the people at PS Support Services, and Info at Kind and Care Supports. <coughs> you are all my NDIS providers, and you are under ob obligation under the NDIS Code of Conduct um, and relevant regulations you are obligated to ensure the safety, dignity and well-being of NDIS participants. I am experiencing all of the situations I described above and it is now crucial for my NDIS providers to take appropriate actions which may include reporting and responding to these issues and the general outline of the reporting obligations for Boss Ibrahim at Personalised Support Services Paula from Prague Consulting and Kind and Care, who currently have me in a safe house only for two weeks near Cranbourne, out of only obligation because I've got a fucking NDIS plan and it's and, and I'm paying them fucking money. They have an obligation to report all these things. Reportable incidents. If I'm subjected to abuse, neglect, harm, or other forms of mistreatment, it qualifies as a reportable incident. NDIS providers are obligated to report such instances to the NDIS 
Quality and Safeguards Commission as per the reporting requirements outlined in the regulations. Number two, unusual occurrences. Even if the situation doesn't meet the threshold of a reportable incident, NDIS providers are still responsible for addressing unusual occurrences that affect the well-being or safety of participants. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, it's all over this. These should be documented and managed appropriately. Number three, code of conduct breaches. If the NDIS participant's dignity is not respected or they are victimised in a way that breaches the NDIS code of conduct, the provider must report these breaches to the NDIS Commission. So fucking report it. Four, protection and support. NDIS providers should take immediate steps to ensure the safety and well-being of their participant. This might include seeking legal assistance, providing emotional support or taking other protective measures. How about a fucking AVO on Steve Isonides who's threatened to fucking kill me and my dog? But he doesn't really fucking have to because I'm going to be dead by the violence of neglect anyway, which is systemic and fucking political because the whole fucking government has his back. And I'm a person of merit who's worked my whole life helping people and this cunt Steve Isonides done fuck all for anyone apart from for the fucking money and he's a fucking hairy backed small cocked Greek cunt as well and number five referral to appropriate authorities if the participants human rights abuses are documented or they have been subject to threats of harassment the NDIS provider needs to refer the matter to the relevant authorities such as the police not that they've fucking done anything much for me lately. Or the Australian Human Rights Commission. Not that they've done anything much for me fucking lately. Anyway, number six, support and advocacy. NDIS providers should facilitate access to support services and advocacy for the participant, especially if they're a former public official and have made a public interest disclosure or their concerns relate to corruption or government matters. It fucking does. And I'm holding these companies, prayer consulting, personalised support services and kindly care supports to absolute um, obligation to report this shit. Number seven, documentation. I've kept detailed records of all incidences, actions taken and reports made. This documentation is crucial for accountability and transparency. Well, holy fucking hell, here you go. I'm banned from the Australian Human Rights Commission. Liz Lindbergh kick, free kicked a million dollar thing to the opposition. T um, Tim Goss from AFCA banned me. The Attorney General won't even fucking acknowledge me. Mark Dreyfus, fucking snide cunt you are. And it's just an abominable fucking rejection and ostracisation of me from society. I fucking worked for 30 years helping people and no cunt even has the guts to stand up for me, not even after I've earned this with merit over a fucking lifetime and done a fucking doctorate in what is mad and what fucking isn't mad. I've fucking had enough. Um, Sheena Jack, fucking cunt from the um, HCF, have redacted my prosperity. Kate, Wat Kate Wat Watson, fucking cunt lawyer for the government who opposed me in a predetermined decision to reject my work cover at a fucking government department. I mean, the government already said no at Comcare and then they um, went to the AAT to fucking deny it again. And they've got a, they've got a lawyer to defend the government's decision already. These are predetermined um, decisions which absolutely are uh, set up to fail and I'm doomed to fail in all these things. This is absolutely political corruption from the fucking top. And even the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet at first admit my freedom of information is voluminous and complex and it fucking would be because I've got a former partner who's an ASIO agent and I've fucking worked the length and breadth of this fucking country. Um, I've been helping people my whole life and plus I'm a former illustrator for the Herald Sun and the Age. Of course, there's a fucking dossier on me at the Prime Minister's office. 
But still they turn around and say, it doesn't fucking exist. And that's exactly what they fucking want. They want me to not fucking exist. You fucking cunts. And Prime Minister got back to me when I wrote him a letter last month. He said to go to the Attorney General's office because it's under his portfolio. Well, hell fucking you, Luger. He doesn't fucking respond to me. And they've said to go to ISIS, who investigate ASIO, and the Ombudsman. Let me tell you a fucking story about ISIS. They already fucking know about Steve Isonides. And they already are fucking defending him. Fucking pieces of shit. And you know what? I can't even go to the fucking Ombudsman because I'm a failed fucking whistleblower there. And because um, um, they refuse to accept any more correspondence. Because I'm a fucking nuisance. Well, I'll be a fucking nuisance. Because you know what? I'm going to fucking die from neglect if nothing happens. And I'm going to fucking die. And I'm not fucking going down without me saying my last fucking piece. All right? So all these people that I've mentioned, you're all being pivotal in the fucking death that's about to happen if no one fucking does anything. What the fuck's wrong with you people? Jesus. Anyway... So, communication. Maintain open and respectful communication. Well, that's fucking out the window, isn't it? With the participant, ensuring they're informed of the next steps being taken to address their concerns. I want to know, from Prague Consulting, Personalised Support Services, Kindly Care Supports, what is being fucking done about the conspiracy to pervert the fucking course of justice, which has redacted all of my fucking prosperity over 20 fucking years, what is being done about the police threatening me with the Mental Health Act and chasing me out of fucking town, literally out of the fucking suburb, away from my home and my stuff, and that they fucking chased me out of town as an innocent fucking fugitive? What is fucking going on with that? What is fucking going on with Steve Isonides threatening to kill me and my dog? What's the go with this... Transparency with the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Attorney General, at Comcare, at AAT, at all these government agencies which have acted with impunity to fucking destroy me. What's been happening with Micron 21 and James Brailberg, the fucking cunt who went in and deleted my whole fucking website and all its backups and all the evidence? What is fucking happening with that? What is happening with Virginia Lay at the Dandenong Hospital saying just before I left that, oh yeah, by the way, you've got HIV. Thank you, Virginia Lay. I fucking haven't, you fucking snide, dirty fucking cunt. What is fucking going on with that complaint? That they fucking would tell me something that would aid and abet my fucking death by suicide because they were, because they fucking wish me harm. You fucking snide, pretentious, privileged, Cunts. And that's what everyone is in this fucking world. They're in a position of privilege and power. And you know what? They've all acted to harm me. You all fucking have. Not one fucking person is left fucking standing who will protect me. And it's a fucking shame. Because you know what? I fucking love people. And I fucking love all of you. But you've all acted to my fucking detriment. And if nothing is done without food, without shelter, without medicine... And without a place to fucking even exist in, I am going to fucking die. And it's not because of mental illness. It's because of a fucking systemic, prolonged violence of fucking neglect. And you've all fucking wished me harm. And the harm has already fucking come because lo and behold, I've already fucking killed myself from this very abuse in February 2021. And then it was... I was fucking revived from certain death and it was fucking covered up at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IBAC, APRA, NHPOPC, and the fucking Commonwealth Ombudsman, Ben Calder, you fucking snide, privileged fucking cunt. You've all acted to fucking hurt me and you know, I know that no one cares. I'm fucking absolutely wherever. I'm not fucking born yesterday. But you know what? I, I have a certain amount of fucking things that need to be done for me. And if I had got a six month old baby, fucked it, killed it, and then ran over it and hid the body, I would still be afforded some food and a fucking bit of shelter. And that's more than I fucking have. And I'm not a rapist, a pedophile or a bloody murderer. What the fuck is wrong with this world? Seriously. So I've just said to them in the email, it's essential for NDIS providers 
to be well informed about their obligations under the NDIS Code of Conduct? Well, I've just fucking explained it to you. And any relevant regulations. They must act in the best interest of the participant. I'm fucking waiting. And when in doubt, consult with the NDIS Commission or seek legal advice to ensure compliance with their reporting and safeguarding responsibilities. The specific steps and agencies involved may vary depending on the circumstances and the jurisdiction. So it is now, apart from the world's beat, you know, no one cares for me about, apart from the people um, who are paid by my NDIS plan under fucking obligation. But you know what? They're under a contract with me and it's the law that they now must report this. So it's personalised support services. Imran, thanks for kicking me out of your fucking house, you cunt, but now you've got to report this or else you're in fucking trouble. Pray Consulting, Paula, you fucking well know all about this and you've got to fucking report this systemic abuse too. Don't be afraid of your political overlords or getting fucking your job fucking hurt. You're gonna be, your job's gonna be fucking hurt if you don't report this. And kind and compare cares responsibility. Who are in this safe home at the moment? You know what, I've never wanted much in this life and I've lived on the smell of an oily rag and I've been a creative and peaceful person in my life and I am fucking at the end of my rope, you fucking dog cunts who fucking rolled me, mate. I hate the world, I hate what you're doing to me, but it's now the obligation of those three companies to acknowledge the words and on this website, of my whistleblowing website, and my documented human rights abuses, victimisation and oppression that is detailed in the report from Tash Sultani from Free Living Australia, which was never signed off on by Zabi, the fucking boss, because he's fucking scared of his political overlords hurting his little part of the patch. Um, and I've attached here um, the documentation of my human rights abuses, my whistleblowing website, and I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward, I'm fucking desperately begging you to work out a way we can achieve an outcome which is favourable to everyone. I've wished no one no harm. I've wished no one any fucking harm. But you know what? Just because you're called out on it doesn't mean that fucking you're innocent in any of it. The world's been a fucking cunt to me and I'm fucking over it and I want a home. I want to have my dog back. I want a bit of fucking food and medicine. I want my fucking human rights returned and I'm fucking over it or else I'm gonna fucking die and, men and mental illness is not the fucking cause. It's each one of you fucking government agents. It's all you public cunt officials and you ombudsmen and all you politicians who will fucking refuse to even acknowledge me. You fucking pack of cunts and I fucking want my day in the sun and I will get it back otherwise I'll be fucking dead and I know you'll blame mental illness but you know what? It's not fucking it. It's the responsibility of every fucking politician and every fucking public official and every lawyer who's acted. I've never had a fucking lawyer in my whole life because I've been fucking excommunicated from the Australian government. What a fucking pack of cunts. There you go, you've had it. And I'm going to be fucking dead very fucking soon if no one even fucking intervenes in my situation. And I just want to say a conspiracy relies on the person's innermost sanctuary and sanctum to be absolutely exploited and um, taken control of. And you know what? My brother, Brad McLean, fucking cunt. He won't even get back to me. And my sister, Jodie Bongetti, fucking cunt. I've begged them for fucking help. Bruce McMaster, he's a fucking multimillionaire and he won't even fucking help me with anything. Mum and dad only do so out of biological fucking obligation that I'm not fucking on the fucking street or starving. And even then, I have to fucking beg him for 10 bucks. My family couldn't have had a fucking more of a field day than if they'd fucking treated me the way they have, they fucking have. I'm a fucking good person and I fucking deserve better and I'm going to demand it. So fuck you all and I want to fucking live. I'm not suicidal, you fucking pack of cunts. And I want to live and I want my dignity and my home and my food and my privileges and my access to the law and my equality before the law back. And that is the fucking law under the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability that was ratified by the fucking federal government in 2008. Have a fucking heart and someone stick up for me and share this fucking video. Thank you.